and welcome to Charts and Hearts. I'm Sarah, and she's Lindsay. And together, we are working our way through an epic list of rom-coms in order to find and categorize tropes in the hopes of creating the nerdiest spreadsheet podcasts have ever seen. Today, in our final episode for Wedding Season, we're talking about The Wedding Singer. <sighs> oh, huh. boy. I had not seen this movie maybe since it came out? Yeah, so... While I was watching it, I was like, there, I know way more lines to this movie than I thought. So I think yeah. I watched it a lot. Yeah, but I don't, I like, I, I watched it a lot, but maybe not like, since, like, 2000. Yeah, no, I'm having a, a vision has dropped mm. into my head of the VHS tape. So mm. we, we had the VHS. So Right. I yeah, guess. I don't remember owning it, but, I, like, it definitely was on TV a lot. Yeah, also true. I yeah, feel like it was, was just... on, like, THC or TBS That's... or one of those channels. THC is not a television channel. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what am I thinking of? TBS. Um, oh. No, TBS. No, the, the TLC. T- TLC. So close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, not TLC. TBS. <laughs> um, yeah, it was on TBS. Like it was one of the movies that they would play like All the four time. times in a row, or like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, since I haven't had cable, which is yeah, like two thousand and one or something, mm-hmm. uh, I definitely haven't watched it a lot. But yeah, it was better than I feared, based on the other movies that we've watched this month. It's definitely mm-hmm. yeah more fun. Okay. The Wedding Singer came out in 1998 and stars Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore, and it takes place in 1985, and he's a wedding singer, and she's a cater waiter at, like, a small town, like, like, Jersey, maybe? Yeah, mid Long Jersey. Island, Jersey. Wedding slash other event venue. He is engaged to somebody, and she's engaged to somebody, and they're both the wrong people. And then he gets left at the altar and falls in love with uh, Drew Barrymore and hijinks ensue. And she's engaged to a guy who's terrible. And then he sings lots of songs and then they get together at the end. And yeah. everything's great. Mm-hmm. Yes. With the help of Billy Idol. Yeah. It's very 80s. Yes. But it's also very like the 80s were so retro and quirky. Yeah. And it's not like that anymore because it's the late 90s and we have normal fashion. <laughs> yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely yeah. one of those things. There's a lot of stuff in there mm-hmm. that is that happened before or like, or sorry, like way before or after in yeah. the 80s and stuff just yeah. like, like randomly playing with a Rubik's Cube. Like nobody's ever going to solve this. I'm like, okay, yeah. we all get it. Rubik's Cubes were big in the 80s. Let's move on. And like... You can make the microwave popcorn this newfangled invention. Yeah. <laughs> and like so many things. Yeah. But Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore are both like good in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they're good together in it. Mm-hmm. So it works. It does. That's why they've yeah. gotten at least two or more yeah. movies. This one's the best of all of them. Yes. We probably won't be watching the other ones. I don't, I doubt we'll do any more Adam Sandler movies for the podcast. Yeah. Sorry friends but yeah Um, yeah okay well let's uh, just do some random observations yeah so let's start with Alexis Arquette she has didn't have a great life and definitely had some decisions and some issues she did ultimately die of uh, AIDS related something I can't remember Mm. I read about it earlier Uh, at this this time she was she had not gone through her gender um, surgery. Oh she yeah, so it was still was going still male, presenting. identifying as male or presenting as male. Yeah, yeah. So it's an interesting thing of like it's an interesting person to cast. They're obviously making a boy George reference. Yeah, most of the time it's like that is yeah, just who her, she is, and her only just... character was to be a boy George impersonator, basically. Yeah, but it was also like every once in a while they made fun of her but more like if she had more character it would be making f- more fun of her character not the fact that she's was cross-dressing as they would say in the 80s or something like that you know what I mean like it was yeah and there was there was definitely a lot of like gay and gender 
mm-hmm. like panic jokes of like like somebody men are manly and women are yeah not and so like if a male character like you know acts like a woman or like mm-hmm. wears jewelry or like like dresses in a like more feminine way then obviously that's to be made fun of yeah um yeah yeah like it's hard to describe like it was a weird like it's a weird meta kind of thing of like they had this they decided to cast this woman mm-hmm. a, which was great for 1998 mm-hmm. but also like i don't know i don't know i don't know yeah well, and it so it kind of goes along because then the next point on our list is like there's so many fat jokes, Ugh. and I think a lot of it just goes along with like Adam Sandler's general like yeah awkwardness of like he does a lot of punching down humor, mm-hmm. but in a way that he's like oh I'm not making like I make fun of everybody so I'm yeah. including you, but it's like his way of making fun is really like othering like showing off how different somebody is not in a like unique way but in a oh my god they're so weird um and then because he does it to everybody it's okay but it's very like punching down not punching up kind of humor yeah um and i think that goes for both the fat jokes and like the any like gender and gay stuff it's like Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. very adam sandler's weird yeah like not my brand of humor. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff in here that he's probably said multiple times in multiple other movies and yeah, comedy shows and yeah. all that kind of stuff. It's just like it's not unique, it's not interesting and it's not it's not smart and it's not No, it's yeah, it's nice. really not smart. Like yeah. Not it's not good. None of it's good. You're just being yeah. kind of something that somebody probably can't control and also like who cares? Yeah, exactly. And it's it's like calling attention to people's differences. Yeah. Not in a, like, not in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. But like in a sort of subtle, weird way. I don't know. Um, and like, I don't know, the like the fat, awkward, left out kid at the bar mitzvah. Like, why does it, first of all, why does it have to be like a fat kid that's the left mm-hmm. out one? Like, yeah, all kinds of kids get left out. Mm-hmm. But also like then because this kid is like awkward and like ignored by his his peers it's okay for him to like non-consensually grope yeah very more while they're dancing yep yep it's just and then adam sandler puts the teenage girl's hands on his butt yeah 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 it's just it's just weird yeah 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 so i mean these are the reasons that we probably won't have another adam yeah. sandler movie on the show because yeah i'm i'm generally not a fan and find him pretty like offensive but in that like it's it's like in that subtle like oh but he's just being funny or he's just like he makes fun of everything yeah i think the problem is like even in this one like he's as a character he's Mm -hmm. very nice he's a very nice character he's actually he's very caring for a lot of people like he babysits he cares about lots of things he's really yeah cares about his best friend like all of this kind of stuff and so then he's, like, such a nice guy. So then, of course, when he says these things, it's okay. And I feel, I feel like that's just how he is in all of his movies. Like, I haven't seen yeah. a lot of his movies because of this reason. But it's like, I'm so nice. So when I say something about a fat person or if it was 51st Dates, a Hawaiian indigenous person or yeah. all sorts of other things, like, it's but totally so nice. fine. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but it's, yeah, it's the othering, and it's like, well, of course he doesn't mean it to be offensive, he's just trying to be funny, but, like, that's the whole problem with, like, people from in privilege, like, doing humor that punches down. Exactly, and, like, is offensive. really funny in a lot of other scenes, like, the point, the part where... Um, the old lady gives him the meatballs under his hands is utterly ridiculous, and he's so low-key hilarious in it yeah and exactly it's amazing and like nobody's getting hurt there no. so yeah. <laughs> yeah like he's you know he's making fun of this like crazy old lady but, but i mean yeah, she's crazy she's... she put meatballs in his hands like exactly yeah that's a, a slightly ridiculous thing to happen yeah. um yeah yeah so you know it is what it is but we'll yeah. we'll try to just like go with the rom cominess of it um yeah not like overlooking and like saying that it's okay but you know we're gonna just move on with the plot (laughs) um yeah so let's talk about the actual intended um asshole in the show glenn glenn 
the evil yeah. doctor from ER who dates Lucy. Right? Yeah. Yep. He yep. basically says the same thing about Lucy that he does about Drew Barrymore in this movie. Like, it's, right. I feel like it's the like same lines. <laughs> like, Yeah. I owe it to her to get married is the one that yeah. made me, like, write mm-hmm. down the quote and write, ew. Because, yeah. yeah, his personality is entitled guy who likes Miami Vice too mm-hmm. much. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, he he's terrible. And, like, I don't even understand, like, why she would have gone on a second date with him. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing that I've got later on in the tropes. But I'm just like, why is she with him for, like, four yeah. years? Like, what? Yeah. It really makes her look dumb. Yeah. And, like, I think I think they both really lack confidence. Yeah. Is why they're, like, with the people that are wrong for them. Like, mm-hmm. you know, and it's it's like what they say about any... You know, like, you have to like yourself before you can, yeah. like, be in a relationship where, you know, you want anybody else to like you. Like, yeah. So I think, I don't know. I don't know. But yeah, he's terrible. And I mean, and I guess this is another, like, Adam Sandler thing of, like, he, he like, laughs along with it for too yeah. long, I think. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, of course you're going to stop sleeping around once you're married, right? Yeah. No. And then he doesn't, like, say anything. Like, it's obvious that the character strongly disagrees, but, like, he doesn't... He doesn't say anything. ...call out his buddy... Yeah, and also just, having like... having those opinions. The... Like, I didn't put this in the tropes, but it's also, like, the cliched, uh, I don't want to marry this guy, and then somebody telling you it's just cold feet. Which is, like... Yeah. ...happens in so many movies, but also, like, just listen to your daughter and don't tell her that you should marry him because he's rich. Yeah, like basically, yeah. I mean, yeah, they should never have been together, but then we wouldn't have a movie, so who knows? Exactly. Um, okay, moving on to more fun things. Oh, man, so much fake instrument playing. Oh, oh my gosh. I can't so believe funny. Amanda watched this movie so many times with me. The clarinet, <laughs> even I was like, how, what Ooh. is happening with that clarinet? And it's like based on how Kenny G plays, which also really bothers my sister, who's a clarinet teacher. Um, yeah. Maybe we'll get her on one day to talk about clarinets. <laughs> And... I don't know any other clarinet. Oh, no, I do know another cla- uh, possible clarinet movie, but we're not doing that one. Yeah, um, <laughs> but this, there's so, like, and then just every single instrument that George is playing at that point yeah. is just... The trombone is better and done, at least. Yeah, but it's really easy to fake play a trombone because you just have to move the thing back and forth. At the right times. The yeah. music in, behind you. Yeah. Um, you can't yeah. see the fingering or any or the lip movement mm-hmm. or anything, so... Yeah. Yeah. I was just like, oh no, it's so yeah, bad. so bad. But like funny bad. And it's it, funny bad because like, it's also like, why did they bring all of these instruments for this one song? I guess they do. It is their hall, so they could live there. But it's just so ridiculous. Yeah, it's so weird. Hey, speaking of, I had this thought of like, have I ever been to a wedding with a live band? And I don't think so. I don't think so either. Yeah, my mm-hmm. uncle got married when I was like nine or something, and it was like a fancy wedding. So there might have been a band, but I don't remember because I was nine. I know there was music, but I couldn't tell you where it came yeah, from. Yeah, my uncle got married at his social. Hmm. I feel like there might have been a band for the beginning part, and then right. it was just a DJ. But I don't know yeah. why I think that. That's the only one that could possibly be correct. Otherwise... No. Yeah. Yeah, so who knows? But yeah, it was just like, huh, yeah, I guess in some places that's the thing, especially back then, like, a DJ would yeah. have to have, like, a truck of, of records. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, like, bands become cheaper in comparison. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because they don't need to own so many records. Okay. Fashion? Yeah, Fashion. yeah. So, I don't really know, like, we'll talk about it later so this movie is so 80s like it's uh, extreme but then mm-hmm. Drew Barrymore is just here wearing looking like uh, what's her face from my so-called life basically yeah yeah and it's, I mean it's she weird. has some 90s-ness but yeah it's very it's very much like okay Drew Barrymore is our like POV character so she's gonna be like the one that looks normal aka dressing like it's 90s but like with a couple 80s tinges and then everybody else looks insane by comparison yeah Yeah, but so much stuff and also yeah like all of her looks like she had this 
the butterfly jean jacket that she wears was actually actually Drew Barrymore's and I guess yeah, she had so it for the audition and then they were like oh bring that because we want it to be wardrobe um, yeah which and it's, is fine it's but like cute. that means it's a 1998 jean jacket exactly exactly um yeah. and like uh she has a lot of blue mascara which definitely picked up again in the 90s mm-hmm. uh, maybe from this movie maybe not I don't know but yeah. I was like, oh, yeah, that blue blue mascara. Blue I definitely mascara. had blue mascara around yeah. 1998. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's just, it was strange. Like, even her hair. Everybody else is wearing a wig. Or yeah, mostly, or has, people. like, crazy, like, big curly hair. And she has very sleek 90s bob. 90s, yeah. So it's just yeah. strange. Like, does she just not wear a wig? Because she wears a wig in Ever After and in Never Been Kissed. So, and this mm-hmm. is basically her post- makeover never been kissed hair is what what this is and so i'm like why it was weird i know it felt like it was very much like drew barrymore has a look and we want drew barrymore's look like regardless regardless which is also strange of like she look this is one of those ones where it it was all at the same time when she came out like with ever after and never been kissed like she looks completely different in both of those movies so i don't know why like in her personal life she had a look yeah not in the movies yeah so they, they wanted weird. the character to look like Drew Barrymore, not like a character in the movie. It was weird. Yeah. yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So in the trivia, there's a bunch oh, yeah. of, there's a couple people who did uh, rewrites and touches and um, ghosts. Yeah, including stuff. Adam Sandler did uncredited rewrites on the script. Yeah, and Judd Apatow, which answers a lot of questions about a lot of things. Yep. But also Carrie Fisher. Mm-hmm. So, and they quoted her when she was talking about being, doing rewrites, and she says... Make the women smarter and the love scenes better. I was oh, like, so oh. Basically, we have Carrie Fisher to thank for all the good parts in this show. Yeah, so she's my general. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. So good. Because, yeah, like, as much as she is naive, she she wises up pretty fast. And, like, mm-hmm. yeah, she, I don't know. She's just, she's a good character. She's a good character. Yeah. Julia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, especially, like, she, or she becomes a good character. Maybe we meet her at the beginning and, you know, she's struggling. Um, mm-hmm, and then, mm-hmm. you know, she gets this job and she makes some new friends and gets to know her cousin. I don't know. Yeah. Like, builds up some self-confidence because she is, like, doing us something that she's excited about, even though the thing she's excited about is terrible, a.k.a. planning her wedding to... Yeah, exactly. A uh, garbage human being. Um Yeah. yeah. Oh, and then, well, it's Plastic Free July, and I was just every time, <laughs> like, after the bar mitzvah, oh which is, like, a short party, and there was literally, I don't even know how many thousands of balloons that balloons. just, like, on the yeah. ground, and, like, all the glittery streamers everywhere, because it's, like, this hall is really ugly, and so to, like, so cover weird. it up and personalize it to all the, like, color, color-themed yeah. weddings, they just mm-hmm. cover everything in, like, thousands of balloons Things and of streamers. decorations, oh, yeah. For, like... Oh, my God hours i was so sad mm-hmm. <laughs> but you know it's like basically a church basement looking space yeah it's definitely so yeah a rec center yeah and then oh one of my actually favorite scenes which like when i watched it i was like i wonder if this is still gonna be cute or and good or is it cringy is the whole church tongue scene oh yeah um, <laughs> and i really like it still yeah i really like it too like it's it's an interesting conversation that we've had with other people when yeah. they, before they get married so uh-huh. <laughs> Yep. And I remember a friend talking about the scene before, like, when she was, you know, think like, trying to, like, envision that part of her wedding was like, mm-hmm. well, <laughs> just think about Drew Barrymore. <laughs> so, yeah, it was pretty funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, shall we summarize some tropes? Yeah, yeah. So we've talked about this, um... In The Wedding Planner, and Mm -hmm. also in our Patreon episode. So this is a big theme for Mm -hmm. this month, is partners are so bad that you want them to break up. But this one is just so extreme. So extreme. On both sides. but On both sides. But yeah, yeah, we've already talked about Glenn. He's just the complete... Like, there's nothing good about him at all. Mm -hmm. And then... um, Is it Billy? Bobby? Linda, I think. Is it Linda? Yeah. Something. Oh, Robbie. Yeah. Linda, the... Oh, yeah. um, the fiance of Robbie, Adam Sandler's character, who like does leaves him at the altar, or, like doesn't come to her wedding, then like sleeps with him while he's drunk. Yep. And like is like, well, I guess we can get back together, 
but like she doesn't actually want to she just i don't even know why she would want to get back together with him like yeah yeah so yeah they're both terrible um at least he like has no temptation to get back together with her like he's Mm -hmm. done yeah which is good so that's good yeah oh yeah Yeah. church tongue is a good trope is um Uh a reason to get the main characters to kiss before they get together so that's yeah a contrived contrived kiss um yeah yeah, because she's like, well, practice your church kiss on this dude. <laughs> on this guy who's here for no reason. Yeah. yeah. It's maybe not like a plot-related trope, but it's definitely like a cliche character is the raunchy old lady. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, which, like, in this, and also I feel like in... in uh, the Proposal? Yep, yeah, The Proposal. What's the one? The Sandra Bullock one... Uh, while you were sleeping. Yeah, they're not... Well, I guess they're not really, like, raunchy. They're just... No, raunchy I guess not... Yeah, not raunchy, but just, like... Just a little bit raunchy. Quirky yeah. and, like, yeah. say the things that everybody else is too polite to say. Yeah, truth tellers. Yes. Yeah, truth yeah, telling definitely. old people, which, you know, is, like, mm-hmm. my goal in life. Um, I know. <laughs> yeah. And then a, a plan to declare their love foiled by a simple misunderstanding that could be yeah. resolved by communication. Yep. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, we can feel, we can cross out misunderstanding and say miscommunication for Mm -hmm. a lot of things, for sure. This one, he was just looking through the window instead of talking to anyone, probably, Uh who would say something of like, even if he went to the door and was talking to her mom, and she would be like, yeah, she's just putting on her wedding dress, she's so excited. You know, like, it could have been the exact same thing, Yeah, the same result, yeah. Yeah, but also, like, if he'd actually just knocked on the door and not seen her through the window... Maybe he, she would have heard him downstairs and, like, come down or, you know, like, actually. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Turns out talking to people about your feelings hey. um, solves a lot of problems. Who knows? <laughs> but you got to wait, get to the end of the movie. Well, yeah, you got to do, do it at the climax. Of, yeah, you got to do the climax of the movie when you're on an airplane after a fancy musical number. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, speaking of uh, airplanes. Yeah. Oh, of course there's only expensive first class tickets left yep. on this plane <laughs> of course that's how it works and then the plane this isn't a trope but the plane has stairs and that freaks me out and i don't like it yeah i never want to go on a plane with stairs I, it's just no no thanks yeah especially like it was like a loungy like couch area i'm like no. yeah it was weird and then there's only ever two planes i can remember in movies mm-hmm. that have stairs this one Mm-hmm. And the plane from Snakes on a Plane. Exactly. So <laughs> why would you go on a plane when yeah. 50% of the time there are snakes? <laughs> I've I've been on a plane with stairs, but it was like, the stairs aren't like in the lounge. It's just like if you're a fancy first class, business class, whatever, you go up the stairs and that's where your seat is. Like you're not, nobody's going up and down the stairs. Yeah. They're not I guess like, the public. only plane I would feel okay about would be Air Force One. But then mm. why would I be on Air Force One? That would be so weird. You'd have bigger problems, presumably, if you're on Air Force Probably. One. <laughs> yeah. um, Aliens yeah. just blew up the White House. Yes. Um, and then, uh, of course, big musical number at the climax. This one's yeah. a little different because it's like a very quirky Adam Sandler comedy song. But it's yeah, also really it, sweet. It's so sweet. It made me so cry a little sweet. bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's really adorable, and they're both so happy. Yeah. Um, the biggest part that actually made me cry is how the, all the first class people team up to like stop Glenn and like push him in the wash in the washroom. That part yeah. made me the happiest. And like <laughs> the big the Billy Idol fan was like, "No, you can't make fun of Billy Idol." Yeah, that's yeah. the part that made me cry. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh, adorable. It just makes me so happy. So happy. Um, yeah, it's. It's pretty cute, but it's, yeah, I mean, it's, like, it's so quirky and funny, um, rather yeah. than, like, a big, dramatic, like, yeah. super production, extreme production yeah. level. Yeah, which is great. Very fitting with this. A bad, a bad one is the the trope or the stereotype of, like, women who are desperate to get married, probably because of, like, biological clocks ticking, blah, blah, mm-hmm. blah, all that. And then yeah. the men who are desperate to avoid any commitment for as long as possible. Like, yeah. Because that would be the worst it's thing like, that's ever happened. Yeah, like, if we're together for long enough, then we have to get married. It's like, well, no, you can use your words and just, like, not. <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, like, that was the weirdest thing of uh, Glenn. He was like, we have to get married so we won't break up. And I'm like, why are you, like, why are you with her? Exactly. It's like, 
well, because he wants somebody to like organize his life and I guess so. look after him, right? So he, yeah, he, he sleeps with other people for the sex and then wants a wife for like the, you know, whatever, like, yeah, emotional labor. And then, yeah, yeah. But it's like, but he also doesn't even want to be married. So I don't understand. Exactly. He's so like, so what good. is the point of you being with her? Like, it just yeah. is weird. It's like, just have girlfriends and hire somebody to clean your house. Like, <laughs> exactly. Yep. Or, you know, if you're a skeezy guy, just have multiple girlfriends. Ones that you just want to sleep with and ones that will clean your house. Yeah. Like, no, hire somebody to You don't have to, to get house. married. But yeah, one said, do that. And don't yeah. be a douche. And Indeed. you're the reason that Lucy and Carter never got together. And then she died. <laughs> Oh, so sad. Um, and then, of course, an epic soundtrack. Uh, oh, this movie yes. has a really good soundtrack. Both, like, the Adam Sandler covers, or yeah. um, Adam Sandler and George covers of songs, and the, like, background songs. And then, also in the credits, I'd totally forgotten, but that's where the Presidents of the USA um, cover yeah. of Video Killed the Radio Star that has, like, better than it should harmonies, considering... That it's presidents of the United exactly. States. Exactly. Like, it has, like, really good, unique vocal harmonies on well, Video Kill the Radio I'm, Star. Now that I'm thinking of it, they do have good harmonies. Like, Peaches is a... No, I know. Peaches like, song. they're better than they should be. <laughs> should be? For a band that wrote a song about a fruit? Yep. Yep, yep. Uh, well, they're still <laughs> oh, being talked about so many yeah. years later, so it's fine. Exactly. They're doing all right. Yeah. Yeah, there's not really any point in talking about the Bechdel test for oh. this one because it's a hard fail. It's really actually upsetting because she has a cousin who is a supportive friend. But yeah. then I thought, I like, I literally thought about it afterwards and I was like, no, they would, they don't have a conversation that isn't about men. Well, and like, does she have any conversations that aren't about her wedding at all no. with anybody? No, she might talk to the old lady about something, but that's... Yeah, and I guess, like, and she talks to Adam Sandler's character about his career aspirations. Yeah. But yeah, that doesn't Nothing really count. Is. That obviously doesn't no. count for the Bechdel test. But I was like, does she talk about anything other than relationships and her wedding? And basically, no. Um, no. Yeah. Good job, 90s. Okay. Yeah. What is, do you have any hot takes about this? Yeah, I do. Picture? Um, yeah. Billy Idol is amazing. I'm really confused, and I don't know enough about Billy Idol from the 80s and then from the 90s, that... He looks really young, but he might just all have looked young anyway. It's not like they had de-aging MCU technology, so I don't yeah. know. No, I think they, I don't know, I think he just, like, looks pretty good. Yeah. Yep. And, yeah, so he's pretty attractive, but I'm pretty sure that's Spike. Yeah. The, that's where that's coming from, and I'm <laughs> fine with that, because uh, I've been attracted to Spike for, since 1998, so, yeah, about you know. that. <laughs> about that um yeah my hot take is that this is the least annoying adam sandler movie i've ever seen um mm -hmm. and maybe the least annoying one out there i don't know as Probably. far as i know as far as i know because yeah i generally find him pretty unwatchable but i actually quite like him in this one and i yeah like overall like this movie so you know um it's got that going for it okay yeah yeah okay pie pie mm, pie mm, fashioning okay well for an Adam Sandler movie, we got 0% Rob Schneider, which is yes. surprising it's, and excellent. <laughs> yeah, I agree. It's very surprising. And then I was just thinking about it just now. I'm like, what if his best friend, the chauffeur, had been Rob Schneider? And I was like, that would have been horrible. And I Unwatchable. never watch this movie. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. So yeah. terrible. Okay. So many 80s Easter eggs. Yes. And like, like yeah, like we said, like not necessarily 1985 easter eggs but also yeah. 1985 easter eggs like like there's flock of seagulls there's the madonna gloves there's um like transformer toys there was something on tv that i don't remember oh time to make the donuts yeah there was new coke yep like um thriller jacket and glove yeah and the um, block yeah 90 crazy 90s hair microwave popcorn or just like microwaves in general like just oh the CD player, yeah. Yeah, yeah, just so many just things. So um, many things. So I feel like that's, I don't know, like a solid 30% of this movie. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so 30% 80s Easter eggs. So many 80s fashion trends, which I think is different from the Easter eggs. Yeah, I think it is too, because it's like, aside from the like obvious callback, call out ones like the Michael Jackson glove, the rest, like Miami Vice. Yeah. But 
the Christine Taylor when she's making her breakfast and she's wearing those that workout outfit. I was like, yeah, she looks amazing. Uh-huh. And that's what I would be wearing if I was exactly yeah. Like she pulls up all of the eighties fashion. Yep. Whatever she wants to wear, she can wear. Like. 50%? <laughs> I would or minus 40, minus 5% because of Drew Barrymore. Okay, so 45%, right. Because, yeah, the main character is does not participate in this. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay, color-coordinated weddings. Yeah, so there's only probably actually three, but they are so yes. color-coordinated. They're that it, so color-coordinated. Like, it makes me happy because it's so coordinated, but it would never be something that I would want. Well, and, like, the the red one, the one where he's really sad at... Um, yeah, like it's red and white and black and a little bit of gold, and all the guests are also following. I know the color coordinating. Yeah, I know. And maybe in the it's teal weird. one too. I don't remember, but I definitely noticed it in the red one. Yeah. Um, but again, we've done so much like visual stuff that doesn't really have anything to do with the plot, so this isn't like that relevant to the no. plot. So like five. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Here's the thing we didn't talk about the problem with Glenn. Mm. Mm. It's Julia Gulia. Oh, Julia Gulia. <laughs> oh. Like, is it a good joke? I don't know. Like, it's a good joke once. Exactly. And but also, the fact that she never clicked on it about for it? four years. Yeah. Is, it's like, the joke of it is almost indicative of, it's like a symbol or a metaphor or something for, like, all the other problems with their relationship. But, like, Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Like, it was... Like, I don't know, were people, people were keeping their names in the 80s? Yeah. So, yeah. you know, that's a thing that you could have done. Yeah, you can keep like, your name. You're not, he could you're change not his lost name. I mean, in the woods. Like, yeah. It would have been okay. Yeah. Yeah, no, because, like, people our age as parents yeah. didn't yeah. necessarily change their names when they got married. So, yeah. I don't know, like, 10? 5? Sure. Mm, maybe 5. Where five. are we at? Okay, so we're at... 75, we're at 85, right? Yeah. So, and then, yeah. oh yeah, okay, so then we've got Andam Sadler, as we've discussed, not one of our favorites, but he's also, like, strangely charming, and you're kind of like, why am I charmed by you in this movie? Mm-hmm. I don't like you, but I do like you. Um, yeah. It's, it's very disconcerting until you kind of, like, just get into the movie. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we'll say this is, like, a solid 10%. Mm-hmm. And then, yep. last up... The random out of nowhere cameos. Yeah, very Adam Sandler again. Very Adam Sandler. Um, no Rob Schneider. No Rob Schneider, strange. thank goodness. But yeah, we've got John Lovitz, Steve Buscemi, we've got Kevin Nealon. There's probably more, but those are the ones yeah, that really stood sure out to me. Are. Yeah. Um, Kevin Nealon's the only one of those that actually got a credit, but he actually had like scripted lines, whereas I think the other, like John Lovitz and Steve Buscemi. Steve Buscemi's in it like quite a lot. Um, he's got a he's got lines. Oh yeah, he does have lines at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. but I don't yeah. think he's credited. Oh, that's weird. It's super weird. Yeah, so I guess we'll give the last five percent to, to those random cameos. Random yeah. cameos. I don't know. Like I guess this movie when it came out was kind of a big deal. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like a period piece, and because it's. Mm-hmm. Adam Sandler and Drew Barrymore, even though that like this yeah. was the first thing that they'd done together. But... They were in, yeah, but this was like the Drew Barrymore Renaissance. Yeah, and it was and... him. I think like well, there's like Waterboy and um, Billy Madison and yeah, so it was kind of like his Pat- first like, like non-gross romantic. out movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then he was singing. Yeah, mm-hmm. and I think it, he was a romantic lead, which everyone's like, what? Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, it was like an, un- yeah. an un- unexpected romantic pairing that worked really well. So, mm-hmm. yeah, so strange. Okay. Yeah, and then Monica and Ross's mom is there. Oh, yeah. She's I not a cameo. Her. She's a, Yeah, she's a pretty main a character, character, but yeah, like... But still. Yep. She's, just she's also there being, being a mom. That's what being, she does. Yeah, being kind of the same character that she is in yeah. Friends. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, there's our pie. Uh, it was pretty, mm-hmm. um, very 80s. <laughs> I feel like it's like a tiered wedding cake shaped pie. Mm, yeah. <laughs> okay. What's next for these crazy kids? Do you think they're going to stay together? I feel the most confident out of the ones so far. For for wedding season or for every one that we've done? For every one we've done. Oh, wow. Like, Troy, and Ga- Troy and Gabrielle are going to oh, break yeah. up. They're going to different colleges. Yes. No, for sure. Um, unless you're thinking of 
Jurassic World 3, and then um, me and Jeff Goldblum and, and Sam Neill, we're staying together forever. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously. No, no, I, guess, I, think, I think you're probably right. Yeah, I think they have some, like, you know, they have a relationship and a life to build together, but I think yeah. they want to, so that's a good start. Yeah, um, I think... Yeah. I think it's good. There's, yeah, there's parts of, like, did he, is he ever going to tell her that Glenn was cheating on her? Or is that just going to be a lot, a thing that he knows for the, the rest of their lives? He does yeah. have, for humor, random anger bursts, which makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. Um, I know it's Adam Sandler classic thing of just, like, quickly rising to anger, but I'm like, that's not funny when it's to anybody, but to your romantic partner, it's extra yeah. not funny. Yeah. So that yeah. was just like, oh, but yeah, they're like, he's they're at like a very a, loving person. Yeah. They're very loving of each other and like capable of that. And like kind of at like the same point in their life. Like, yeah, that's what I was going to say. They want the same things, which is yeah. a big deal for um, you, like bigger deal than you would think for all the other couples that we've exactly. talked about. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And they they're... have stuff in common and like, they like, Hanging out, like, they were friends first, which I yeah. think, obviously, is a trope, but we're going to come across a lot, but mm-hmm. is yeah. a big and they, deal. You know, they work well together, they planned a wedding together, and got along yeah. well. It's always a good starting of a relationship, but yeah, I think, I don't know, the fact that, yeah, he didn't tell Glenn that he was cheating on her is, like, goes along with the whole thing of, like, it's just boys being boys kind of thing, but, like, mm-hmm. you know, you can pass on sexually transmitted infections with, yep. you know, like, all that kind of stuff, so, Yeah. Yeah, it's a little bit meh, but also before they're together, he want, he just is like, well, she's happy, so I want her to be happy more than I want her to yeah. be with me, which is mm-hmm. like... Which is the like opposite good, of most things. Yeah, and it's a good instinct, yeah. so therefore, yeah. Yeah, it reminds me of Ropa 99 when Jake's like, I can't get mad at her for dating a guy when she doesn't know that I like her. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's, yeah. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yep, so good. Again, like Adam Sandler being charming and sweet. It's yeah. so strange, and I don't mm-hmm. know how to feel about it. Um, yep. Well, I think that probably brings us to the end of this episode. Um, don't forget that you can rate or review us wherever you get your podcasts, like Spotify, Apple Podcasts, all of the above. Um, you can find us on social. We're at Charts and Hearts Podcast on Instagram and Facebook, and Charts and Hearts on Twitter. Or you can head to our website, Charts and Hearts. Dot com where you can submit your suggestions for rom-coms or for tropes you want us to add to the list for future explorations. I had an amazing transition into what's coming up mm. uh, if we go back to the part where Lucy died. And it <laughs> is that next month is Shakespeare Adaptation Month. We're not doing 10 Things I Hate About You first, but if you get that reference, we are best friends. <laughs> so <laughs> next ne- August is... Shakespeare Adaptation Month, and so we are starting in August with She's the Man, and that will be great, and I'm very excited about it. Uh, Mm -hmm. It's also our first Vancouver movie, so hey, everybody loves filming at Jericho (laughs) and fan tech. Indeed. Um, If you want to hear more about this month's theme, we just released our Patreon episode about my best friend's wedding, which was surprisingly positive. I would say two out of three wedding movies were one and a half thumbs up. Yeah. So that's a surprise. Yeah. So hooray. Our Patreon, if you want to join us on our Patreon, it's patreon.com slash slash charts and hearts club. And we've got two episodes over there so far. And then they've also got the full schedule until mm. December. So they know all our secrets. All the secrets. And <laughs> yeah. And yeah. Yeah. We don't have an outro yet. Oh, as you should um, say, I think our outro is, and in the meantime, we're still working on an outro. <laughs> yep. Yep, I think that's a great outro. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Bye. Bye.